Hi there guys, I'm just going to be doing a quick review of my Death Adder V3 Pro that I picked up recently. Um, this is the second attempt I've made at this just because I've used the mouse for a lot longer now and I wanted to include more comparisons to the other mice that I own. Um, so for starters, of course, this is a right-handed ergo mouse. Uh, it's kind of for medium to medium largest hands. Size-wise, it is bigger than the EC2 from Zowie. It's bigger than the Vaxi Outset. Uh, but it is smaller than the prior Death Adder, and it's smaller than the EC1. Um, however, it's not larger in maybe the ways that you would expect uh, immediately. So, for example, uh, compared to the EC2, it's a little bit longer, but the actual hump width is almost identical. If you actually look at the dimensions online um, in compare tools and things like that, I actually like the shape um, a little bit more on something like the EC2, I think. Um, and I like where the side buttons are positioned better and things like that. But overall, they're really, really close to each other. They're essentially, well, I don't want to say the same shape, but they're very similar shapes in what they're going for. Um, the reason why I kind of favor this one over the EC2 then, it's not because of the shape changes, it's just because it happens to sort of fall into that middle ground between the EC2 and the EC1, uh, which is kind of like a, a golden zone, in my opinion, at least for, for me and my hand size and grip style. So I have 19.5 by 10.5 centimeter hands. Um, so I found one, well, I don't like the claw grip personally. So uh, for claw grip, I actually think the EC2 is, is a dream. Uh, but for, for, you know, palming or kind of, I like to sort of relax fingertip grip, which, um, I take kind of the peak of the mouse hump and I take the base of these fingers and I rest it down. I align my thumb and I just sort of relax my hand. It's a sort of a, uh, palm or maybe a relaxed fingertip grip. Um, but I don't choke up on the mouse. Like some people, when they palm, they think of like going really far forward. That's not what I do personally. Um, but, uh, I, I've come to learn over time that the main thing I don't like about Zowie's mice um, is the coating and the shell material. So um, it took me a while to catch on to this. Uh, I think if you like sticky coatings, like if you like your hand to go on and just not move, if you like it to adhere to the surface, then Zowie mice are great because uh, it's like glue when your hand goes on. I don't like that. I have a strong preference for... Um, this shell material and coating, um, or even this one, uh, where you have this sort of matte textured shell and your hand doesn't adhere to, to the, the shape as much. So you can kind of throw it around in your hand or uh, shift your grip in real time. I like that a lot personally. Um, I do think in terms of click feel, uh, EC2 definitely wins like by far, no question. Um, just, they nailed these side buttons. They nailed their position too. And this is one of the only ergo mice I feel like where no matter how I hold it, I, I actually can comfortably reach both buttons. That's not even true of this one. Um, though it is more comfortable than on the Death Adder V2. So what I mean by that is like, let's say I kind of hold it the way it's comfortable for me. Uh, if I slide my thumb up, it kind of goes on to the, the back one. Um, and if you fingertip where you're kind of in the back of the mouse, it's even worse. So it's not horrible. Like you can still reach this button and it's a lot easier than it was on this mouse because that was always my biggest criticism of the old Death Adder was the way that I held that mouse. It's like, oh, so I have to shift my entire hand forward to reach this button and that sucks. Um, and I don't understand why mice manufacturers do that. Like I, I think it'd be better if they rotated them backwards closer to the hump because it is a lot, even your clawing, I mean, it's a lot easier to shift the thumb back like this because you bend it to the joint than it is to move your entire arm forward. So I just, I don't get that. Um, it seems especially like a problem on razor mice. It is a little bit better on this one though, um, which is great. There's a nice detail for the side buttons on this one that uh, I didn't notice originally. So I really like how they angle them up. So you kind of slide onto the button and then the slide part, like this little uh, tilt, it's like rubberized and it feels super good. And I love that detail uh, a lot. Um, these are optical switches uh, on really the old ones as well. 
So I've sort of arranged these by size where they get larger in overall terms. Um, but uh, these two use optical switches. So there's no debounce delay. But I think they feel worse than the mechanical switches on these other mice. Um, at least to my subjective preference. These are, a, a, I would say, a pretty meaningful improvement over the ones on the old Death Adder V2, though. So they're just tensioned a lot better and you get more feedback when you press them. I think they're fine. They don't bother me at all once I kind of get into games and things like that. Um, I did have an issue with the side buttons. So they're fine. I mean, I think they're okay. I don't think they're outstanding. I mean, other than this tilt, I love the tilt and I love how they rubberize the underside of it. I think that feels great and it makes it feel really premium. And I, I kind of want that on all my mice now. Um, but... Um, I, I have a strong preference for these ones. And even the outsets, actually. The outset is pretty good side buttons. Um, but the problem I have is the front one seems to be tensioned really well. But the back one feels a little more flimsy to me. Like, uh, So this one feels great. The front one feels great. And then the back one feels like kind of flimsy and loose. And then it sounds bad if you press it at certain angles. Like it feels like it's scraping against something inside the shell, and I don't, I don't really care for that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of nitpicking it. I do think they're good. They're just not as good as the Zowies. As far as the scroll wheel goes, they've kind of gone with a hybrid wheel approach on this one. So, um... You know, if you like browsing and gaming, it's really good for that. I actually prefer the old V2 wheel because the uh, defined steps are a little bit better on this one, I would say. Um, but for gaming purely, I actually prefer the EC2 wheel and the EC1 wheel because you get these super chunky defined steps and it almost feels like a mechanical button when you're pressing it. So I never over scroll anything at games. They just nailed the middle click on these. You know, it took me a while, I guess, to get used to it because I don't like the sound. I wish that it was quieter, but um, the EC2-C wheel, I just, I love it for games. It's awesome. Um, you know, and you get the nice detail of angling up the cable. If they released an EC 1.5 official that's kind of in between the EC 1 and the EC 2 in size, and then they replace their shell material and coating with uh, what they're doing here, or with um, like a rubberized coating like on the Superlight, um, that would just be the dream, and I think I'd be done at that point. <laughs> but uh, I know they have a wireless version of this, but I think the reason why... The reason why I and maining this one it's just because of the size difference primarily and obviously the weight is pretty light so it's really well balanced um you know and it's 60 it's 65 grams thereabouts um, especially the white one which i think is ever so slightly heavier because they used a different paint compound in the shell um, to prevent it from yellowing but um you know i find that personally just because i think the reason why they flare out the left side like this on ergos it's because if you're claw gripping then it gives you a nice contact point, you know? And I think if you make the mouse too wide, like something like the Death Adder V2, I don't find this mouse personally to be as comfortable to claw as something like an EC2 or a Death Adder V3 Pro. Um, and I think part of that is just because the back end is really wide. But as far as like just comfort in the hand, no other criteria, this is, uh, this is my favorite shape um, because you get this really wide back end and you get a... a, a you get a very pronounced support hump um, in practice where I just love this shape. I mean, your hand goes on. And it's one of the few ergos where, like a lot of ergos, I feel like my hands want to, well, I'll show you here. I feel like my hands want to do this. Like, I feel like my finger, I feel like there's no room for my pinky. And so my pinky's just here. And it's like, okay, well, where is it going to go? And it just wants to wrap under. So you end up having to hold it where you tilt the mouse and I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel natural to me. And I, I think that's the problem with how these manufacturers, in a way, they're going for these hybrid shapes, right? Like, they're going for a, what can we do, or it's a hybrid ergo shape where you can throw any grip style at it, period, and uh, it'll just work, you know? And they've succeeded. I mean, I think the EC2 and this, you know, the Death of V3 Pro, like, you can do that. Um, but the V2, I think, shows you kind of a world where, if you just focus on getting one grip style right, 
it feels great. So uh, to me, I take issue when reviewers say things like, oh man, the new and improved shape, it's better, it's more ergonomic. And it's like, okay, well, no, it depends on what your grip style is and depends on how you hold the mouse and what your hand size is. So I think if you're a claw gripper, absolutely this is preferable, at least, at least to my taste. Um, and I also think it makes other improvements like uh, the side button positioning is better. But, uh, well, and also I find this one, my fingers don't come off the end in the same way like on this mouse if you kind of if you are someone who chokes up on it far enough so you can reach this side button because this button positioning sucks uh, in my view uh you know your fingers kind of come off the end so i think that's an improvement here what i would have liked to have seen personally is maybe have this be ever so slightly less pronounced and then i would have liked more of a flare at the back right and i i actually prefer kind of a wider end back just because of how I, I hold the mouse um, because you know, I have pretty wide hands so if you're trying to set them down I hate I hate this phenomenon where it's like well what do I do with my pinky where does it go oh it wants to wrap under and this is like the only one I would say where I really don't get that sensation at all and I think it comes down to having this really wide back end and support hump but that's not to say this is in here you can kind of get used to it what I end up doing a lot of the time is I sort of tilt grip it where um, if you, you basically can place your hand further further to the left on the shell and it gives you a bit more room to use the support hump that's there. Um, but anyway, I think for people that want a hybrid wheel, the wheel's really quiet and that's great. Um, I just think that the steps on it are not as well defined as I would have liked. And I do kind of scroll the wheel by accident sometimes when I click it in, I never have that problem with this wheel. Like, uh, I, I didn't like this wheel at first, interestingly, but it grew on me so much just using it in games that now it's it's hard to go back. For gaming purely, like for browsing, this wheel is garbage. But, but you know, it depends on what your use case is. Um, the outset, I actually think that this is like a good proof of concept mouse, but I can't recommend it to people because the wheel is like the worst wheel I've ever used in my life and the cable is the worst cable I've ever used in my life. The cable is like a stick and it just got in my way constantly. And I didn't feel that way for like the uh, modern Speedflex on Razor cables, or um, you know, even the one they're using on the EC2-C or EC1-C ones, which I would tier maybe a little bit lower because I think these are good cables and I wouldn't swap them, but the Speedflex on the V2 is the only one that I feel like I could like fold it and it would just kind of be fine and not, uh, I wouldn't have to adjust it all the time. Um, the EC1, the problem with the EC1 is I found when I was using it for long periods of time, it was almost a little too big. Unless you want to fingertip it off the back, which is really comfortable in fairness. And what it was, was I felt like it was a little bit too tall without being wide enough in the back. So what I kind of want is I love the EC2. I feel like the height is perfect. I feel like the left side of the mouse is perfect. I feel like the button positioning is perfect. Um, the problem with it is it's not quite long enough uh, I want the, uh, I just want the front lengthened out a little, and then I want the, uh, I just want it to be wider, basically, in the right direction, because um, I have these big meaty paws, so if you're kind of palming or relaxed, fingertip gripping or something like that, I just found, like, it, it wasn't large enough in, in that sense, um, so that's why I say, like, you know, and people always bring up, like, the Death Adder V3 Pro, which in fairness, if you want something like an EC 1.5 and money is, you know, not uh, the biggest concern. I mean, obviously this is very expensive uh, for, for most people, but uh, this is probably the best option right now uh, for kind of approximating that. And I do think the, I brought this up already, but I think the shell material encoding on this, the only mouse I have used that is a better one to, to my taste is the Super Light, which has that rubberized coating, which feels really premium. Um, but I just, I don't like how gluey uh, the EC's coating is. It, it just doesn't work for me. But um, anyway, I'll go through all the clicks really quick on this one.
Now, if your hands are bigger than mine, you know, they definitely, they get larger as they go. The outset, the tragedy of the outset is that they really nailed other aspects. Like, I think this is a really good shape for some people, and you'll find in other reviews, people just rave about this shape for a reason. I, I found that I preferred the EC2 because the EC2 is longer. Um, and then, you know, other people, I think the they either mod the cable or they're just not as bothered by those you know, the wheel as I was, but uh, it's a really good shape, especially I find for like fingertip gripping it off the back of the mouse. I think it's really comfortable. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm really sad to see this shape die because it's kind of one of a kind. I mean, the Death Adder was really popular and it's a very controversial shape because people don't like the front flaring. Um, and that comes down, I think, how you hold the mouse, right? Because for me, the way I hold, held it, the flare just never came into, into play, right? Because your, your fingers don't reach it, uh, essentially, on either either side. Um, I liked it because you ended up having this super wide area to just rest your thick, meaty fingers. And uh, you get so much support for your ring and pinky finger wrapping around that... Uh, you know, I just think this shape was one of a kind. I think they nailed it with the V2. The V2 wireless, they actually subtly changed the shape where now the hump, like, sat your fingers down closer to both buttons. But the problem with that, I found, was I actually liked how the hump was on just the pure, plain V2, uh, where you could, you know, position your... Basically, the highest point was a little bit further back, it felt like, uh, to me. Because I, I had a uh, wireless one for a while. And the shapes were very, very slightly different. And I think that was the wrong... I, I imagine they were doing that to kind of center people better on the side buttons. But to me, that's the wrong way to do it. Like, just rotate the side buttons back on the shell a little bit instead. And then, uh, obviously, I've complained about the positioning of these. Like, there's no reason to have this long black bar, shrink it up to the size, push it against the wheel. Um, and then I really like the detail of how Zowie rounds these front, you know, the front uh, portion on the corners. They don't do that here, but it doesn't end up really being a problem, I would say. Like, one thing that's great about this mouse, and they've advertised this a lot, is they've talked about how they, they put in a lot of room for this finger ledge. And they really did. I mean, you do have, no matter how you want to hold the mouse, you do have a lot of room on the side for your fingers, which is nice. It's mostly just the width of the back and the support angle that I would have, I would have preferred, you know, more of. Uh, personally, but if your hands are larger than mine, the EC one is awesome. Like it's one of the only shapes for my where like I can choke up on it and my fingers don't come off the end. Um, and I still think it's easier to reach this furthest forward button than on the old Death Adder V two. Um, but yeah, I I found that it was almost a little too big for me, and I don't like the shell material and the coating compared to other options is the uh, the issue. But it's still a really good shape, and some people have raved about this as kind of being the ultimate palm grip mouse. It really doesn't get any bigger than this, as far as I know. So uh, you know, if you have like twenty two by twelve hands or something, like probably that one would be uh, my recommendation, or this one, though your fingers might come off the end. Um, but yeah, there's not a ton to complain about with this one. I think I I think I would have preferred if they'd put one uh, DPI button here or one rebindable button because I do kind of like that uh, because if they've got room for it. You could make a cutout in the split trigger switches and then you could bind it to a, a map button or something like that um, in a game. I would have preferred if these were just a hair uh, further back towards the hump, but I think it's because they were accommodating. Like, if you claw the mouse, you can see that the buttons line up perfectly then. It's only if you're, you know, relaxed fingertip gripping or tilt gripping it um, or palming it where it can it can kind of be a problem. But again, it's not the end of the world. I, I do think it is an improvement over this one. This one was bad. This one, it's, okay, well, it's maybe not as good as on the EC2 positioning. But it's all right. Um, I do love the addition of split trigger switches. That's another thing I'd love Zowie to do. Like, man, I say this in every video. Like, Zowie, just give me an EC 1.5. And uh, if you could keep the wheel feel and just make it quieter. And then uh, swap out your shell material and coating for something like this. I'd just be done. I'd be happy. I wouldn't have to keep buying mice. But, uh, you know. It's a really good shape. It's hard to complain about it. You can throw a lot of grip styles at it and it will be functional. 
Um, yeah, battery life has been really stellar, I would say, getting into that. So I don't have the hyper pulling dongle for this mouse. And I think at its price point, it would have been really nice if they just included it, um, which is basically the mouse has a pulling rate of a thousand by default. Um, but you can go up to 4,000 if you're willing to sacrifice some battery life and if you're willing to shell out for the hyper pulling dongle. I'll probably get it eventually, and I think I'll probably end up trying 2,000 hertz because um, it is linked to battery life. Um, so at 1,000 hertz, the battery life's been great. Like I, I've charged this once, and I've used it for like a week and a half, and I still don't have to charge it again. Um, at 4,000 hertz, apparently it chews through power much faster. Um, so I'd probably try out 2,000 or something like that. But even at 1000, it's been one of the better wireless implementations that I've tried. The reason why it took me so long to kind of jump on the wire, the wireless bandwagon here is because uh, my first experience with wireless was very poor. So what I mean by that is some wireless mice, especially older ones, they feel kind of floaty or like there's interpolation going on or they don't feel quite right, you know? So the Superlight and the Death Adder V3 Pro, I think both feel pretty, pretty dang good at a thousand hertz. And I was sort of hard pressed to tell the difference between that and the wire. Uh, you also get, which is awesome, I mean, that's what you want. You also get um, actually a really good cable this go around. So this cable that it charges with, it's really important to me for wireless mice that you get a cable that is uh, reasonably long and where it's a high quality cable, where it, it's not in your way and it's not like a stick, you know, it's not like the Vaxi outset cable. Um, and they did that here. And the reason why that matters is because eventually batteries kind of decay and they might die and they might die potentially before the mouse. So I think, I think it's important that you have something that actually is practical to be used like for gaming while charging. And I think they did do that here. And it's one of the better cables that I've seen uh, come with it. Um, and you get USB-C, which is just a nice bonus because a lot of mice don't have that. Um, but it is hard to complain about this one. It's reviewed very highly for a reason. The really, really the only sticking point other than subjective preference and uh, things like that would be the price. And uh, I do think it would be nice to put a button here, but maybe they didn't because they're going for weight. I mean, that's something I've kind of ranted about before, but so I think lighter mice are, are preferable. I agree with that. But the problem I find is that it's like manufacturers are chasing weight so much, they end up compromising their mice in other ways that aren't worth it. And I'll give you an example of that, right? So like, uh, Zowie mice are not like the lightest mice in the world, but they feel like tanks, right? Like this thing feels well built. I feel like I could throw this into a wall and it would be fine. And then they just nailed the feel of everything that they put here. I mean, in my opinion, other than the shell and the coder coating. Um, but uh, on this mouse, I feel like compared even with the V2 Pro, like it just, it feels a little hollow. Like some of the side buttons feel like a little flimsy. And, uh, you know, maybe that's exaggeration because they still feel pretty good. Like, I think they did a pretty good job. But if, for sake of example, you could add 10 grams to this and then give it that solid feel of like a, a Zowie mouse, like that, that's worth it to me. That's preferable to me. Or uh, if you could add 10 grams and do that and then have like a button on here, right? Because part of why I think they cut down on the buttons too is because like they're trying to bring weight down at all costs, right? And... Um, I like bringing weight down, but not if, not if it means you're compromising the design in some other way, right? Like to me, once you hit kind of 80 grams, I, I don't personally even, I mean, once you hit like 80 grams, I'm pretty happy personally. Um, but I don't want to uh, be too negative on it because it is hard to complain about this one. It's really good shape, good feet so far. And, you know, even if these feet wear down, which it's too soon to really say, but most feet wear down eventually. Uh, I love the Zowie includes kind of the extra feet in the box. Vaxi lets you buy more feet from them when you actually place the order of, you know, different kinds. Uh, fortunately, the feet for these are going to be pretty common because they're just really popular shapes in mice. But um, what's here is pretty good. And uh, despite kind of complaining a little about the side buttons, I do think they're pretty good. They're better than most side buttons. They're not like the super light side buttons, which suck. And, um, you know, it's not that the wheel is bad. I just, sometimes I scroll it on accident when I'm pressing it in because it's just very easy to scroll. And I, I would have preferred that you don't have more defined steps. But anyway, before I start repeating myself, um, yeah, I, I would recommend it if you like right-handed ergos and you... Uh, 
kind of want like a medium to medium largest option with a good wireless implementation, good battery life, good build quality. And uh, I do think that the shell material encoding for me just makes this feel a lot more premium in some ways uh, versus like the EC1. But I miss the Death Eater V2. And I, I don't know, I hope they make like a Death Eater V2 classic at some point because I just really like this shape. But uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, if there's anything I forgot to say or talk about, then I guess I'll just leave a comment and pin it. But um, have a good one. Bye-bye.